Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make pizza dough. Um, you will need some strong flour, sometimes called just bread flour like this one is. Okay, so strong flour. I have got salt. I have got some oil. Olive oil um, is normally the one you'd use for pizza, but I've not got that in, so it's just rapeseed oil. I've got some caster sugar. Mine is golden caster sugar, but white caster sugar is absolutely fine. I have got some yeast, okay, dried yeast. And I have got some tepid water from the tap. Tepid means that it's not hot, it's not cold, it's sort of in between, okay? Um, I've got roughly 80 millilitres of that. Okay, so this should be enough to make two pizzas. So mixing bowl, and in there, I've already weighed out 150 grams of the strong flour, so that can go in. Right, first things first, I'm gonna put the salt in. I need my measuring spoon. Now I need half a teaspoon of the salt. Let me just try this. What the salt does is, it does add a little bit of flavor to the pizza dough, but, Mostly what we use it for in this is it will further strengthen the gluten strands that are found inside the flour. Okay, so half a teaspoon. This is fine, fine sea salt, so it's already ground up. If you've got like sea salt flakes, things like that, just crumble it up a bit before you put it in. Right, now the problem with salt is it's great for the gluten, but the yeast doesn't like it. So you need to mix it up a little bit so that when you do put your yeast in, it doesn't directly touch lots of the salt because that will kill it. Right, so next in there, I want to feed my yeast and you will know that yeast loves sugar. So we're going to put sugar in. So half a teaspoon as well. Next, the actual yeast. So you'll remember from your lessons that yeast is a microorganism. It is a fungus. And this is it dry, okay? At the moment, it's in a dormant state. So it's not really doing anything. It's just sort of sat there asleep. We want to wake it up, which is the reason that the tap water we're using is tepid. So it's warm and it will wake it up a bit. Now yeast, I want, I'm just gonna put that little bit in. I also want a half teaspoon. There we go. So if that's not the whole sachet, I'm gonna put that to one side, put a clip on it and it will keep. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a really quick mix. Next, I'm going to put oil. And for oil, I want 10 millilitres, which is two teaspoons. And now I just want to add enough water to just bring this together as a dough. Do not just put the whole lot in in one go, you might not need it all. So I just put a little bit in at a time, then I give it a quick mix. So you can see that's not come together as a dough yet. So I just add a little bit more. To me it looks like it is enough. In fact, I'm just going to put a tiny sprinkle more on. Right. There we go, so that looks quite good now. All the powdered flour has incorporated into the dough. But what I now need to do is the bit that you guys hate when we're in school, where you have to knead this for 10 minutes. So, a very light bit of flour on the clean work surface, then I just dust my hands as well. Now what we need to do is, in here there's gluten strands. Okay, so thinking back to when you're in year eight and year nine, you've done this a little bit as well. Um, inside the flour are two protein strands. One's called gliadin, one's called glutenine. When I add water, which I have done, 
those two protein strands will join together and they create the longer strand we call gluten. Now at the moment that gluten is going to be a longer strand but it's all sort of like curled up in itself still and I want it to be straightened out because I want it to be able to act like a net and catch the carbon dioxide that the yeast is going to give out when it starts to ferment. Okay, so to do that, I knead the dough. And the kneading, the action of kneading, gets those gluten strands all nice and straight and in alignment, so they create that gluten net to catch the carbon dioxide. So there's two main ways that people knead. Some people use their knuckles and they stretch the dough like this, bring it back, stretch, bring it back. I find that really difficult to do. I use the heel of my hand, but you do whichever one is better for you. So you stretch the heel of your hand and bring it back. Now, when you first start doing this, you can see it's quite tough. It won't stretch that much. If I pick it up and I try and pull it apart, you can see it doesn't really stretch. But after about 10 minutes of this knead in action, all those gluten strands will have aligned themselves. They will be nice and straight and the dough will be nice and elastic and quite smooth. I am not going to add any more flour. OK, you will feel the texture of the dough changing, but that's OK. That's what it should be. It's not sticky. It's not sticking to me or anything like that. Just keep kneading for 10 minutes. So I'll see you back in 10 minutes time. OK, so I'm at the end of my 10 minute kneading time and you can see that this dough has changed quite a lot in texture. It's a lot smoother. If I stretch it, you can see it's got a lot more stretch to it. OK, so I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I've got a clean bowl, put a tiny bit of oil in there. And I'm just going to mix that around the bottom and the sides. And then that dough goes into there. I'm going to leave it in a warm place. So I'm going to pop it next to my radiator in my kitchen uh, for about an hour. And what will happen is the yeast that is in there will start eating the sugar even more that's in there. It'll start eating the natural sugars found inside the bread flour um, and it will start to release carbon dioxide. And as it releases the carbon dioxide, the bubbles of that carbon dioxide will push against the gluten strands that should be in a net sort of formation from the kneading. And that pushes the wall of this dough up and out and makes it rise. Okay, so I'll leave it for about an hour and I'll see you then. So it's just been over an hour, so let's see whether this has risen up nicely or not. And there we go, it has, it's definitely doubled in size that one, okay? Right, so next thing is we need to start shaping that. So this amount of pizza dough is enough for two, two individual pizzas, okay? So I've got a piece of baking parchment ready. What I'm going to do is just very lightly flour my hands and then, oh this is so light. Okay, if I pick that up, I know you can't see how light it is, but I'm ripping to it. Oh, look how elastic that is. So much gluten formed. Right, so what I'm going to do is you are kind of squishing some of that, um, the air bubbles out, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to shape it. And by doing that, I just pull it like this. You can see I'm sort of spinning it in my hands as I pull it and rotate it around just to get it into that sort of pizza shape. Now I'm sure you've probably seen the videos of people um, who do this for a living, who make these amazing pizzas uh, where they literally spin it on their hands and so on. The reason you can do it is you can see this elastic, that's all the gluten is allowing you to do that. You could probably hear my kids playing again. Right, so I lay it down. I'm quite happy with that. It's almost formed like a natural crust. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to lift it on the baking parchment, put it on the baking tray. Now my oven is already on. I've preheated it to 220 degrees Celsius, gas mark seven. I'm going to cook that in the oven with nothing on it for about eight to 10 minutes, just enough to cook this base because I don't want to put any toppings on it yet. If I do that before the base has been cooked, you could end up with a really soggy pizza. Okay, so I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes. 
So my pizza is coming out. There we go. What I did forget to tell you was to just stab the dough a little bit with a fork before you put it in. Okay, but you can see that has started to rise up again because the yeast was still alive. I'm afraid it isn't now, okay? Um, so we had that bit more carbon dioxide being released into the dough, which has pushed it up again into that gluten net, which forces this structure upwards. Now, what I'm going to use to put on in the saucepan, I have got passata, which has then been mixed with some sugar, a bit of salt and some mixed herbs, and then we have reduced it so taken out some of that excess liquid and evaporated it out um, using a gentle heat. So I'm going to put some of this on as my pizza sauce. So just use the back of the spoon just to move it and coat the pizza. There we go, take it to the edges. There we go. And then your cheese. I'm using a vegan cheese alternative so that my daughter can eat this. Sprinkle it on. Don't put too much on, don't overload it. It will just end up melting and ending up all over the baking tray. And then put on whatever toppings you wish. Then that goes back into the oven for four to five minutes, just enough time for the cheese to melt and whichever toppings you are using to finish cooking through. Okay, so I'll pop this back in and I will see you when this has finished cooking.